6.1.1 state the Doppler effect in words. I'm just going to leave that for you. Let's take a look at 6.1.2. Use the given information to calculate the speed of sound in air. So let's take a look at the information we have. So an ambulance is moving away from a stationary listener. So if the listener is stationary, then we have VL, the velocity of the listener, being equals to zero. Okay, the ambulance is moving away from the stationary listener with a constant velocity of 25. So we have VS, the velocity of the source, being equals to 25. Okay, the siren of the ambulance emits sound waves at a frequency of 550 hertz. So we have the frequency as emitted by the source being 550 hertz. The siren of the ambulance, okay, 550 hertz. Let's carry on. The listener detects the frequency of these sound waves to be 512.64 hertz. So the frequency as observed by the listener is 512.64 hertz, okay? Uh, we are told that the ambulance is moving away. But even if the question didn't say that the ambulance is moving away, we would be able to deduce it from the mere fact that the frequency of the listener is less than that of the source. But anyway, stories. So V, which is the speed of sound in A, what you are interested in. We don't have that, okay? So that is our unknown variable. Sticking to the basics, we're going to have FL, the frequency observed by the listener, being equals to V, plus or minus the velocity of the listener, V plus or minus the velocity of the source, multiplied by the frequency as emitted by the source. The frequency experienced by the listener is 512.64, being equals to speed of sound in air, what we're interested in. Plus or minus the velocity of the listener. The listener is stationary, so VL is equal to zero. Everything divided by V. The ambulance is moving away. So that is supposed to be plus 25 in the denominator. If it was moving towards, it would be minus 25. Multiplied by the velocity, not the velocity, but the frequency of the source. And that is 550. Okay, so a mark for the formula, a mark for the substitution. Usually, it's two marks for the substitution. They find a way to some way somehow squeeze two marks for the substitution. But let's forget about that and focus on the problem solving. Okay? So, there's a couple of different methods people, people will use in this position. But ultimately, we must get to the same answer. So, this is the method I'm going to use. I will divide both sides by 550. Okay? So 550 and 550 will cancel out on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, I'm going to have 512.64 divided by 550, which is 0 0.9321. So I have 0 0.9321 being equals to V divided by V plus 25. I didn't do anything fancy here. I just divided both sides by 550. Okay. And now I want to go ahead and cross multiply. V multiplied by 0 0.9321 will be 0 0.9321V. Okay. And now I have 0 0.9321 multiplied by 25. Uh, that is going to be plus 23.3018. Okay. I'm rounding off to four decimal places because I'm not at the final answer. At the final answer, I'm going to round off to one decimal, to two decimal places, not one. Okay. And then V multiplied by one, it is just a V. If I take 0 0.9321 V to the left hand side, uh, to the right hand side, I mean, I'm going to have one minus 0 0.9321, which is 0 0.0679. So I have 23.3018 being equals to 0.0679V. It is obvious what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of V, which is 0 0.6. 
0.0679. Okay, if I do that, I'm getting 343.18 meters per second. I'm quite happy with this answer because this is the value we, we usually get. We have 343. It, it's always somewhere there. Okay, so it is not unusual. It is not odd. If I was getting 20 meters per second or 900 meters per second, I would be panicking. But now I have 343, which is almost the value I always get uh, in other problems. Okay, uh, that is 6.1.2. 6.1.3, uh, a bit conceptual. The ambulance is now moving away from the listener with a velocity that is greater than 25. Okay, how will each of the following change choose from increase, decrease, or remain the same? Let's take a look. A, the speed of sound in air. The speed of sound in air will remain constant, right? Uh, the speed of sound in air is not a function of how fast uh, the velocity of the source is, right? So this will remain the same, okay? And then B, uh, the frequency of the sound waves emitted by the siren. If you are emitting sound waves with a frequency of 500, that is not dependent on how fast you're moving. The frequency that you're emitting is going to be 500. Whether you're stationary, whether you're moving towards, whether you're moving away. So again, we have remained the same, right? So this is the remains uh, the same. Now let's look at C. The frequency of the sound waves detected by the listener. Take a look at our equation. We had FL being equals to V divided by V plus Vs multiplied by the frequency of the source. Okay. As you can clearly see, if the velocity of the source increases, we're going to have a way greater denominator. And then if you increase the denominator, the number as a whole is decreasing. So the frequency of the listener would decrease, right? So the answer to C is it decreases. Yeah, we can clearly see that from our equation. And then 6.2, 6.2.1, uh, the spectrum of a distant star when viewed from the Earth is red shifted. Is the star moving away or towards the Earth? And 6.2.2 says that use the Doppler effect to explain the answer to question 6.2.1. Right, I'm interested on how you answered this question. So 6.2.1, is it moving away or is it moving towards? Let me know in the comment. And what reason did you give? Why are you saying it is moving away? If you said it is moving towards, why are you saying that that is the case? Let me know in the comment section.